All right, let's have fun with the pattern to brush. Okay, I'm going to start out real simple here, and let's make a couple lines. So I'll make a line from here to here. Oops, I want a straight line. And I'll do another line from here to here. And this bottom line, what I want to do is make it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to choose a different stroke ratio, maybe five. Also, what I want to do here is maybe put an ellipse on the end of this. So hold Alt and Shift to make an ellipse from the outside. And then arrange this to make it look good. You can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to arrange this. And this one I'm just going to set back just a little bit farther. Okay, so there. There's my pattern, I'm going to call it. Okay. This one I'm going to just make it so it's lined up. Now, how do I use this pattern in a brush? Well, that's very easy, sort of. So first, grab your black arrow and highlight these two. And go in here and edit define pattern. I'm going to call this run. This little ball on the end, I'm going to define it as a pattern. And I'm going to call this corner. Now with my run and corner, incidentally you can have like four or five different runs and corners. I'm going to go up here in my brush and add a new brush into my library. And this time I'm going to add a pattern brush. And here it states what is my run and what is my corner. And maybe I have a different, a different corner for inside corners compared to outside corners. Okay, That's what these are. They're the different outside inside corners of things. And my tail and my head. What are they going to be? Well, my run is going to be a run. My corner is going to be a corner. This one is going to also be that kind of corner. And my tail is going to be a run. And my head is going to be a run. Now, does it always have to be that way? No, it could be all kinds of crazy stuff. So, invent. The rest of the stuff I'm going to leave to default for a second and hit OK. Let's play around with this brush. So, we're going to grab a pen tool and click a line, a line, and a line. Whoops. Just like that. And while it's highlighted, I can go over here and click this. Ooh, cool pattern. Okay, now let's adjust it. Let's click here, and then we can have preview on, and we can adjust things. Now, I don't know why the guys at Illustrator didn't actually put an actual um, little, I don't know, slider here would be nice. You know, uh, just keep in mind that if any officials ever watch this video. Slider, nice. Okay, scale. Maybe I lower the scale down to like 50%. Okay, I get that. My spacing is already at zero. If I put it at two, it's just going to make bigger spacing in there. So that's obviously something I don't want to do. So it's all about the actual scale and how big this is in order fit to fit the pieces together. A lot of times also, you have to kind of think ahead when you're making pat a pattern brush because you want these to be a little bit longer than normal compared to this. So by, you know, kind of mimicking with these sections and playing around with the whole spacing thing and maybe add space to fit or approximate, I can get all kinds of variations. I can flip these around. Okay. But that's where a slider would be so handy because, you know, at least I can click on the slider and say, well, I don't like that. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. So. That's how you make very intricate outside, or a very easy one. You can get very complex. You should look up pattern brushes online in Google. They got stuff like floral patterns that were just amazing. So it looks like a real plant growing on the outside edge of your, your picture. So this is a very important thing because when I come down to uh, giving you an assignment, I'm going to have you make an outline around your um, 
actual assignment and this is how you do it. So let's go on to the next video where I have to teach you some more tricks before we get to that point.